Jeremy Smith here, Palisades Ultra Trail Series Race Director. Just want to take a few minutes and be real with everyone and, and share a few thoughts about the 2020 uh, putts race coming up here soon. I wanted to thank you all for your faith in us to give you a race this in these crazy times. Um, it has truly been a lot of crazy changes. Most RDs, race directors would tell you right now, it's not been the funnest of years. But for runners, probably been even worse because one by one, you've seen all of your races get taken away from you. And we are super excited that we are gonna be able to give you a race that we hope will meet your expectations. This year, there are gonna be some changes and I'd like to go over some of those COVID-19 safety precautions that we're taking. And just know that we do these uh, for a lot of different reasons, but mostly we wanna be protecting all of our runners and our spectators and volunteers uh, who are working so hard to, to make this become a reality this year. So here are some of our guidelines and I'll be following my notes and trying to read these. Uh, these will also be sent out uh, in an email to all of you. So you'll be able to either watch this or, or read it if you'd like. So first thing I want everyone to know is that we do not want anyone who is sick or under quarantine attending the race. So if you have a chance of having COVID or you are under, are under quarantine for whatever reason, we don't want you here. So we love you, but don't come. And if you can show us the proof of that from the Public Health, uh, health, Asso uh, health Association, from the um, public health department, uh, you can show us uh, that proof of quarantine letter or your doctor's note, then we're going to give you a 100% refund uh, during the month of July. So please do let us know in advance of the race what your intentions are, because basically any refund or cancellation or, or any policy that we can enact has to take place before before the day of the race so we know who to expect and what's happening. Uh, so again, if you are under quarantine uh, directly or if you have been diagnosed with COVID during the month of July, please let us know that, email us before the race and you'll get 100% rollover. If you have concerns about COVID for traveling or for your own health or whatnot uh, uh, because of the latest and greatest situational changes from the, from the pandemic, please email us and we will be dealing with those on a case by case basis. And thank you in advance for your patience as we try to strike a balance between being flexible with runners and also trying to uh, manage a race that we hope will continue for years to come. So here are some of the things that we have done um, for the race to help it be safer and more comfortable for, we hope for everyone. So here's our guidelines. First thing, canceled pre-race dinners. I know that pre-race dinners are kind of a 50-50 split on whether we love them or we don't, but we're gonna put it on the runners this year to provide their own pre-race meal. That way we won't be grouping together uh, like we normally would before the race. We are also canceling our pre-race meetings except for the 100 mile meeting. And the times are all gonna be posted in, in, our, in our letter. Um, I, can, uh, I can tell you what times those are going to be as well. Thursday at 6 p.m. is gonna be our pre-race meeting for the 100 milers. And all other pre-race meetings are gonna be held virtually. We are gonna send YouTube links with, uh, or video links, sorry, with all of our pre-race info to everyone and we ask you to be responsible and watch those. And let us know if you have questions in advance of race day, because the closer it gets, we, the busier we are, in generally speaking. So, uh, canceled pre-race dinners, canceled pre-race uh, meetings, except for the 100 milers. Packet pickups are not canceled because there are things you probably want to get, including our awesome Squirrels Not Butter, uh, Smart Wool socks, and uh, a bunch of other goodies in your, in your pre-race packet, including probably what is most important, your bib number. So please do come and get your packet, uh, come to packet pickup. Uh, we are gonna start it earlier than we have in years past. 100 milers can come as early as four o'clock 
on Thursday to get your packet. Uh, and for the 50 mile, 50K and half marathon, we're gonna start that at 3 p.m. on Friday to allow runners to spread out and really not be rushed to get their, their packet pickup. Um, one of the things we're really excited about this year is that we've created a unique commemorative, it's a Hoorag brand of a buff, essentially a neck gaiter, that we would ask that people wear that or other similar mask uh, when, you, when social distancing is not possible. And that includes packet pickup, post-race dinner, coming in and out of aid stations, your start, uh, starting line area, your finish line area. We know it's a little inconvenient for some. We don't ask you to run with it. That would be a little tough. We're expecting some pretty high temperatures, but uh, please do have that with you and wear that when social distancing is not possible. And we hope you can use that for years to come and, and, uh, and it'll make you laugh to wear this. Um, it has some pretty cool things on it. So, so we appreciate your consideration of that uh, expectation. Um, drop bags this year, we are still going to be offering drop bags at the North Indian Creek Aid Station as normal for our 100 milers and 50 milers. We will bring those for you or if you have a crew and you're running the 100 or the 50 mile race, they can bring that as well. It's probably a safer bet to have us bring it for them. Uh, that way there's no miscommunication or they get there late or get lost or held up in traffic or whatnot but they can bring those or we will bring those. One addition this year is for the 50K runners at North Indian Creek, we are not allowing crew. That is only nine miles into the race and we do understand that's the only spectator point for the 50K, but that aid station has been really busy anyway. And so this year to try to keep our numbers of spectators down, we are not going to allow 50K crew to be there. So because of that, we are going to offer a drop bag service for the 50K runners as well. You just need to get us to that, get, get that drop bag to us before the start of your race. Um, so those are drop bags and packet pickup. Um, also, just speaking about a little more about that uh, North Indian Creek aid station, Please remember, even if you are a 50 mile or 100 mile crew, there is no camping allowed there. Volunteers are spending the night, but there are some no camping rules set forth by the Forest Service. So no camping in the north vicinity of the North Indian Creek aid station, please. And again, no crew for the 50K runners, um, but you will have a drop bag. On Saturday, for the 50 mile and 100 mile crew at North Indian Creek, we do ask that you get in and out of that aid station as quickly as possible. It's a busy station anyway, and not having 50K crew there should clean that up a little bit, but we are hopeful that run, uh, crew will get in and out without lingering. Please have a good idea of where your runners are at. Uh, if at all possible, you should you know, have, a, have a decent idea, especially from those 50 milers after they come, come over the top of the hill on Quaker Flats. So. Um, all right, race lodging. We are continuing to offer free camping at the, at the finish area, the start finish area. Please be respectful and don't just pitch your tent right two feet away from another tent. There's plenty of space. In fact, way more space than we've ever used down there. So please use all the space available. We have uh, rented additional hand washing stations and restrooms and those are gonna be one in the camping area, one in the start finish area, and then another at the North Indian Creek aid station. So we hope that these things are gonna be able to allow people more chances to wash their hands. We also do have our bunk houses that are, uh, they have a bunkhouse shower house that's down there that are also accessible for bathroom use. We even have showers down there and there is, uh, there'll be soap and hand sanitizer in there as well to, to wash up as well. Uh, the bunkhouses are also going to be available for use and we don't, we have plenty of room in there to allow people to, to have their own space in the bunkhouses. So all of our race lodging is, is still there. On race morning, again, anytime there's no chance to socially distance yourself from others, please wear a face covering. Beards don't count. Um, 
most of our races are going to have under 50 or 60 participants. In fact, that's, that's about the max that we should have this year. We had a lot of rollovers. So uh, with 50 in each race, we feel like even, with a, even if the guidelines drop down to 50, 50 people in a group, we should be okay. Right now, we are not limited to 50 people in a group according to our local CDC guidelines. But we do, uh, we, even with 50 people, we're going to have basically two starting corrals. The front starting corral is going to be those uh, age group winning wannabe uh, runners and overall wannabe winners. If that seems to be you, then we want you to choose to be near the front. And then if you're just kind of out there to, yeah, you can run hard, but you know that's probably not you, um, or you're going to be a little bit on the slower side, maybe behind some of those, you know, uh, younger folks that, um, that uh, might have a, you know, a great chance of winning um, or experienced trail runners, then put yourself behind them a little bit. So we'll have those two starting corrals, but you'll make that choice of where you're going to start. Um, there is no need to huddle in the starting arena. I don't think it's going to be super cold. And uh, so let's be respectful to our other runners. Our race morning check-ins. Generally, we, and we, we always require all runners to check in on race morning. That is different than packet pickup, but you do need to check in. We're going to have additional volunteers there checking people in with a clipboard on race morning. So we'll have those areas indicated of where you go, depending on your bib number or last name. Uh, so just find those places, and then that way we should be able to stay a little further away from each other, not in a, one big line or huddle together. Um, Check-in for the 50K is going to begin at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning, and then the half marathon check-in is going to begin at 7 a.m. We do have some di different start times than what we originally posted, we moved the half marathon to 8 a.m. So they are not starting at the same time as the 50K. We loved doing that last year, but uh, just seemed to make sense. A very easy fix. So half marathon begins at 8. Your check-in begins at 7. And your uh, again, your 50K check-in begins at 6. And you start at 7 a.m. The start times for the 100 mile, you, you begin at 6 a.m. on Friday. And your check-in is at 5 a.m. Your 50 milers begin your race at 2 a.m. on Saturday, and your check-in will be one hour prior at 1 a.m. Just to reiterate, it is not mandatory for runners to wear masks while you are racing, but please do communicate with other runners around you. Uh, if someone was really uncomfortable with being passed, we want to be respectful to that. So please just communicate and at least let them know uh, as as, as you probably should in a race anyway, just let them know that you're passing on their left or right and, and try to do it at a wider spot on the trail. I mentioned uh, changes to our post-race meal. There is going to be hand sanitizer at the entrances and exits of all of our race areas. Please use the hand sanitizer all the time. Do not form a dense line to, to the serving line for our post-race meal. You can eat wherever you want, but we do encourage you to just pick up your food. And uh, it's a grab-and-go type meal this year, so please grab it and get going. Uh, it's we don't we don't uh, we don't think that this year's the year to to congregate at the finish line and and to form a big huddled mass right at the entrance to the lodge where you're going to be getting your food. We do have a variety of foods that are going to be laid out there for everyone to get between drinks and salties and sweets and, and something really hearty for you. We're still finalizing that menu. So that'll all just be pre-packaged that we will have in individual serving sizes that you can uh, just take and, and be on your way. This is for our volunteers, and I want to let you know, just uh, this, is, this video is primarily for racers, but our volunteers... We thank you for your service, and racers, as always, we do want you to give our volunteers the utmost respect, especially in this year where they have, you know, they didn't come out this year just to, uh, for whimsical reasons. They are there because they believe in what we're doing, and, and they believe in, in the cause of runners and what we do out there, and it is important. Please give them the best respect you can and be grateful to them. 
they're going to have a challenging time this year wearing face shields and rubber gloves and really paying a lot of extra attention to a few things they haven't normally needed to worry about. So please, please, if you have complaints, come to me, directly to me. And I'm, I won't say I'm happy to field them, but I will field them and, uh, and we'll work through things together. But uh, please let our, aid, let, our, let our aid station volunteers um, know what a great job they're doing because they are doing their best. They will be wearing gloves. They will be uh, not taking your own hydration pack and bottle this year. They'll be helping you to fill them, but that is on you to fill your own bags, bladders, um, water bottles. Volunteers are going to be putting small and loose food into little cups and baggies so that you can take that yourself. We don't really want people reaching in the hand into the M&M jar or uh, fingering through the, the peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Uh, we're going we're gonna to try to make it really simple for you to just grab what you need and not have any cross-contamination from runner to runner. If you see something, if there's something that you see that you want that you don't see, please ask them. They might have something that's in a location or in a on a table or on a on a bark stump or on a rock that you're not aware of. Uh, we are gonna ad give additional um, additional cleaning supplies, uh, Lysol wipes, Clorox wipes, uh, and in addition to hand sanitizer to all of our aid stations. Please use that when you come into the aid station. Use the hand sanitizer. And then on your way out, on your way, let's let's just be really uh, efficient and conscientious of conscientious of not spreading the germs that that they're all talking about in the news. So here's some additional guidelines for aid stations at uh, our runners at the aid stations. Um, please don't touch cooler spouts or pitchers. Let our volunteers with gloves handle those. Basically, if you think another runner might be tempted to touch something, or if another volunteer is likely to touch something, just ask, and our volunteers should be there to help you out uh, with those with those things. Obviously, if they have a bunch of baggies of peanut butter jelly sandwiches or single serve M and M's, grab whatever you need there, and then just take it. But but for for the pitchers, the cups, the you know the things that things that they're not washing on a regular basis, let's let them handle those for you. Dispose of your own garbage. Remember to not litter. We've actually done a great job as a as a as a community on these trails of making them extraordinarily litter free. Let's keep that uh, let's keep that streak going, and use the trash bags that'll be provided at all aid stations. And just ask for uh, for your patience. We again with those volunteers this year as they have some additional changes. One of the changes that we've made to make their job a little easier, uh, some of you know the last few years we've attempted to do live tracking and we've prided ourselves on always knowing about where most of the runners are. This year we're going to be doing a very thorough job of tracking the first and last runner of each race uh, so that we have a good idea when the next aid station needs to be ready for them. However, with the exception of Cabin Creek, we're not going to ask each aid station to basically radio ahead with all the bib numbers of all the runners. If we have a specific question or someone seems to be misplaced, we are going to reach out as a headquarters and try to find them. And that should be just one text away because they will be at each aid station keeping a written record of all the runners that pass through. However, the messaging of every single runner really clogs up the lines of communications, preventing us from getting very immediate medical and urgent uh, inquiries and responses and specific requests for certain runners. So uh, again, we're not going to do live tracking, but we will know the flow of the race in general. And again, Cabin Creek is the exception because they are roughly six miles from the finish line and we're going to be asking Cabin Creek to email us or message us ahead of time with all of the runners so that we know who is coming and who we're still waiting for to hit Cabin Creek. Um, we have not altered our uh, cutoff times as of this time. Uh, everyone else is going to have the same amount of time as, as they're accustomed to and as is posted on our website. Again, one last time, remember that masks and or a face shield are recommended at all times when social distancing is not possible. And if you have any questions or concerns about our COVID-19 safety plan, we are happy to field those questions or concerns. Email us directly at palisadesultra at gmail.com. And 
continue your taper. We are looking forward to having a great race with you all next week.